everybody, welcome to Ready, Set, Drone. Uh, yesterday I posted a quick video explaining the trouble I was having with my DJI Phantom 4 Pro Plus, and I got a lot of great responses. Uh, the biggest response, or the most um, consensus seemed to be that I needed to update the firmware on the actual remote control. So to give you some quick background, I hadn't flown my uh, Phantom 4 Pro in a couple of weeks and I was gonna take it out and just update the firmware and fly it around a bit. And when I fired it all up, everything looked good, but I got the notice on the screen that said inconsistent firmware found. So like I always do without thinking about it too much, I slid the little, uh, little, little uh, button across and it updated the firmware. Well, as soon as it did that and it rebooted, I started getting horrible video transmission interference. I was uh, not seeing the video very clearly. There was lots of green on the screen, lots of pixelations, just all kinds of ugliness happening. And uh, I couldn't figure out what was going on. So I updated using DJI Assist 2 to the latest version. And I guess I was never really clear on how uh, the controller got updated. I thought the two talked to each other wirelessly and when you updated one, the other one updated automatically. But I guess that wasn't the case because I spent a lot of time trying to figure out um, why the um, bad signal was happening even though it said I was on the latest version of the firmware. Uh, I went into the frequency settings, I changed it from uh, 5.8 to 2.4 which didn't seem to help. I was just getting a really bad video signal, lots of interference and so I posted that video uh, yesterday and had a lot of people tell me well you need to update the actual controller but since I am using the uh, Phantom 4 Pro Plus which has the built-in screen I didn't think it was quite as easy because it's not really it is DJI Go 4 uh, but it isn't the same way it would be on an Android or on an iOS device um, in that this thing is only connected via Wi-Fi you don't do app updates the way you do on your phone so it's a little different and so I was kind of confused and at a loss but then I found on actually on DJI's website uh, in the forums a note about how you can actually update the uh, controller itself to the latest version of firmware. So after trying to regress my firmware on the drone which didn't work and trying a whole bunch of other things I decided to try this method. And so basically what I'm going to take you through is how to update the firmware on your remote. Now, so if you are using your firmware using DJI Assist 2, uh, that is a fairly straightforward process. Um, you just connect the drone to the uh, computer. Now keep in mind that when you connect your drone to your computer, you need this uh, micro, S, uh, micro USB plug and then a full size USB plug for the computer. Unless uh, you've got like one of those fancy new uh, MacBook Pros and then you need an adapter for this, but whatever. Basically this is the cable you need. When you're connecting your drone to your controller, you need to have this little adapter that comes with your Phantom 4 or Phantom 4 Pro. And this basically puts it as a micro SD connector on both sides. So you plug into the micro SD output on your remote control and the micro SD input on your Phantom 4. Uh, for a while, I was trying to plug into the full size USB on the remote control and that does not work. That is for something different. It's not for doing updates. So if you're gonna do updates between the remote and the, the control, or and the drone, you need this configuration right here. However, in this case, what I'm talking about is actually, uh, doesn't use this cable at all. So again, using DJI Assist, you can plug your drone directly into your computer with a cable like this and update the firmware. The way I ended up updating the firmware on my remote that has the built-in screen is I went to DJI.com, clicked on drones, Phantom 4 Pro, then you scroll down here to where it says downloads, and then you scroll down here to firmware, and you download this zip file. This is the uh, zip file for the remote control uh, itself, and it is different than the uh, update for the Phantom 4 drone. So you download this zip file, and then what's very important is you take that zip file, you unzip it, and you'll end up with a file that's called a bin file. It's, uh, the, the suffix is .bin. Let me show you real quick. So this is my zip file, and this is my bin file. gl300e underscore v1200 underscore a whole bunch of numbers .bin. 
Now this is the thing that I actually put onto a micro SD card and put into the controller. Now a couple of points about that. Number one, you want to make sure you have the right type of micro SD card. So the micro SD card I used is the same one that I use in my Phantom 4 uh, Pro Plus, which is a SanDisk Extreme Plus 64 gig. It has uh, a 3 on it, which I think is the classification of the speed of this thing, and it worked perfectly. It's the one I use in the drone. It's also the one I used for this process. So the first time I put this into the back of the controller, uh, there's a slot right here that it slips into. Um, and you want to slip it in upside down with the pins facing upward and the label facing down. The first time I slipped this in um, and tried it, I got an error. Now, the reason I think I got that error is because I hadn't formatted this card in a while. And it's important how you format this card. Just like you would format the card for uh, video or photography, you go into the app, you uh, click on the, um, you know, the photo settings, and you scroll down to format SD card push that, say yes, and then once it formats it, then this card is as blank as it needs to be to work. You pull it out, you put it into an adapter of some sort, put it onto your computer, and this can be a PC or a Mac, and what's really important is you don't drag the zip file onto this thing, you copy the bin file onto it. And it's a 1.6 gig file. Now, this video may be a few months old by the time you watch it, and maybe the Next update is a different size, but it's a fairly big file is what I'm saying is, you know, this one was one and a half, over one and a half gigs. Then once the file, which is the only thing on here, except for another folder that was left on it, um, and I can't remember the name of that folder. Hold on, I'll look it up real quick. Okay, so when I actually pulled the micro SD card out of the controller and had formatted it in the controller, uh, I ended up with a folder on my micro SD card called lost.dir, all capital letters, L-O-S-T dot D-I-R. Um, and so that was it. It was the only thing on the card. The card is called no name, no space name, all caps. And I dragged that bin file onto it, and then I put it into my uh, controller, turned on the controller. Okay, so once you open the DJI Go app and you have the card in it, um, you go into this little gear and then you go into system settings and then you scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll see a little button that says update. Now I've already updated my uh, thing so it says um, current version. So I guess I could say check for updates. Um, now the thing is right now I actually have my Wi-Fi turned off on this so that's why it's not seeing it. But um, what you'll do is you'll have the card in, you'll say uh, current or, or you'll go to this little updates button down at the bottom and then you'll hit this little uh, three things up here click on local update which is an option on the upper right and when you click on that local update it'll look for that card and it will update using the card and once you do that which takes probably about five minutes uh, maybe ten minutes of it um, going through a whole bunch of screens and cycles and stuff then you turn it back on then once I turned everything back on and turned on the quad, um, it said inconsistent firmware. So <laughs> that's where I started. I went ahead and slid the uh, little dial across for inconsistent firmware. It did another update and then everything was great. So now my quad is back to normal. I think originally I had uh, updated the firmware on my drone, but it wasn't updated on my controller and that was causing all my problems. So part of the way you can tell you did this correctly is when you insert the micro SD card back into the computer and open it up, and instead of just this lost.dir and uh, bin file, there's a text file called upgrade.log. And I'm sorry, upgradelog.txt. And in it, you can see all the upgrades that it did, and you can see the word success at the bottom if it was successful. And uh, that means you did everything right and you're uh, firmware should be upgraded on both your controller and your drone and you should be good to go. Hopefully this was helpful. I know it's a little bit confusing but I tried to step you through it step by step. Um, thanks again to the great community of viewers out there who kind of helped me understand that probably the biggest thing I needed to do was to upgrade the remote control. Uh, Ken Heron actually texted me directly and, and uh, explained a little bit of it to me which I really appreciated. 
So, um, you know, it's a learning thing. Everybody's going to learn a little bit. Hopefully this helps. And if it does, uh, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to know more about drones and DJI and how to do upgrades and all kinds of stuff, please subscribe to Ready, Set, Drone. Thanks for watching.